everyone, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, we've got two middle linebackers who will look to lead their defenses to victory. It's the Broncos going up against the Chiefs. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, from one of the loudest venues in the NFL, there's a look at Arrowhead Stadium here in Kansas City. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Arrowhead Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was just about off the charts. They're set for football as the Chiefs get set to do battle with the Denver Broncos. And hi again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and you know, Charles, as we count out a kickoff here, normally we look at quarterbacks or running backs in the open. We had a look a second ago at the linebacker comparison, and you think it's well justified. I love it because they're the guys who control the game from the middle on defense. They're the signal callers. They're also the guys that you count on stuffing the run game with great tackling, but they have to be agile in today's football, being able to drop into coverage or even cover running backs in man-to-man. -man. The children will groan. It's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So here are the Chiefs now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the number one overall selection back in 05 out of the University of Utah. It's Alex Smith. And head coach Andy Reid has said even with Patrick Mahomes being picked number 10 in the draft overall, people think he's going to replace him. Alex Smith is our guy, and he should be. Third in the league in the number of wins behind only Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers since 2011. Now the rookie from Toledo, this is Kareem Hunt. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hunt. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. And now the Chiefs offensive starters. They ranked 20th overall in total offense in 2016. But when I look at Kansas City's offense, I see much better than that. Wide receivers who are fast and skillful downfield. Running backs who make people miss and can get the ball into the end zone. A tight end who's a game breaker down the middle. I think this team is way better than the numbers suggest. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Smith with a give to Hunt. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On fourth down, on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Northwestern University. It's Trevor Simeon. What a ride he's been on these last few years. I remember seeing him in high school before he went to Northwestern. Didn't get on the field all that much there. And then got to Denver as a seventh-round pick and ended up starting the season opener in 2016 for the defending Super Bowl champs. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. 
And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we're back to Arrowhead after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and six to start things out. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And an extra DB here for the Chiefs on third down. Pass situation. A shotgun snap for Simeon. Looking deep for Demary. He's got a man complete. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Simeon on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. A lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Ten yards still left on second down. From the gun, here's Sevian. His throw incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. To the air again, Simeon. And Green with a catch left side. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now the second-year man from Syracuse, Riley Dixon, on to punt. Tyreek Hill back deep for Kansas City. The Chiefs bring pressure, and they block it. Now it's picked up near midfield. The 30. Pass the 20. And with a clock reading zeros, he is into the end zone. What an exclamation mark to the end of this second quarter. Indeed. Indeed. As you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he 
his kick is good to make it 7-0 KC. So we've come upon halftime here in Arrowhead with the Chiefs on top as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks, and welcome everyone to our EA Sports halftime report. Let's get to the highlights. Both the Chiefs and the Broncos have very low rushing totals. It has not been an effective part of either team's game plan, and you wonder if either side will give a more concerted effort to run it in the second half. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. About halfway through the second, the long ball will find its mark here, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 43-yard line. Okay, Larry, back here, 7-0 our score as we ready ourselves for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. All right, here we go. Three, nine, On first down, Simeon. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Second and ten, Simeon. On the right side, caught by Green. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 18 big yards on that one, and a Denver first. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop him? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And all the way home for a Bronco score. C.J. Anderson, 52 yards. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. 
The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's C.J. Anderson who tops it off with the touchdown run. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick's away here. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Chiefs offense ready for their first reps in half number two. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They'll start with Hunt on the ground. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. there maybe a yard up to the 24 in order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4 those three guys up front the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends they're usually big big people because they're gonna have to eat up a lot of blockers because usually five on three and when they do their job well guys who play on the inside those inside linebackers they will just roam and hit Throwing on third down, Smith. He hits West underneath. Three quarters have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. We're back now in KC. 7-7 is our score. Pretty even matchup so far as we start quarter number four. First down. Now shoving his way inside the 35. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. A good pick up there, 26 yards. The two big plays, one after the other. Now all of a sudden, they're on the march. Got to feel good about what they've just gotten done, and now feel really good about what's in front of them. going to give this one to Hunt. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. 
Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push them back more. They run again with Hunt. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. And now the Broncos will burn another timeout here. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. This is Chark Hendrick West. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. And now then, it's a big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth. But, Charles, there is still time left for a final drive. Brandon, you know they would have liked to take the clock down just a little bit further, at least under a minute or so. But this was not over yet, especially since they just need a field goal. After the main field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Sanders and brought down but not before reaching the 45 yard line solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down he'll look to throw and caught right side green and he takes this one down all the way near the 30 
That one goes for 24 yards. And the spike comes now with just under 40 ticks left. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Anderson. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Simeon. A dump off to Anderson. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from the first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to tie things up in the final minute. And his kick is good. And that will knot us up at 10. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession and after both teams get a possession then we're into sudden death first team to score wins the game So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And out come the Chiefs now. The situation is simple. It is sudden death from here on out. We had two stops defensively. The next score, whatever it is, wins this game. I can't wait to see how the defense decides to play this because knowing that the next point you give up lose the game for you, I expect them to be more aggressive, not just play a normal situational defense, but go after them, attack them a little bit because otherwise the offense is just trying to find their way to get downfield and kick a field goal. Don't sit back and wait for them to make their plays. I think the defense needs to go after them. Charles Davis says maybe they go aggressive. To begin the drive, here's a handoff to Hunt. And he powers his way up past the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. First throw here in overtime for Smith. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's third and four. Big play here. Try to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Out of the gun, Smith. And able to find Conley. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Go, 
So here we go, first and ten now. On the run, this is Hunt. And some room to run now. And now running right through it. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. to about the 46. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Third and one, trying to keep this drive and overtime going. A big one coming up. From the gun, here's Smith. He's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit. And another first down. Brandon, that's a huge completion there. It puts him in field goal range, but let's face it. They don't want three here. They want six. With these overtime rules, a touchdown finishes it off. Yeah, look, looking to win it right away. Good to know, though, that they have three in their back pocket if they need it. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, here's Smith. Oh, he almost had it. Would have been a big interception here in OT. Instead, it'll give him another shot on third down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Coming up on a third and nine. Opening drive of overtime as they look to convert. A shotgun snap for Smith. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Vaughn Miller able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. I give thanks every day that I never had to play offensive line in the NFL and have to try and block <laughs> Von Miller. He was second only to Vic Beasley last year with 13 and a half sacks. Right, 
Here's Dustin Colquitt now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine yard line. Nice punt. And Denver getting set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And tough starting field position here. They start the drive with Anderson. And not much there at all as he'll get this only up to about the 11. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And welcome back. The offensive unit, they took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. Second down, nine yards to go. Watch the curve, watch the curve. Yeah, here we go. Blue, and movement Blue, by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. False start, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Following the penalty, Anderson. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. And on third and inches, we're going to get a whistle and a timeout. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Out of the gun, Simeon, and this is caught, Demarius Thomas. Simeon finding Thomas there to give the Broncos a first down.
And the offense lining up first and 10. Back to throw, Simeon. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Allen Bailey in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Simeon in need of something big following that sack, facing third and long. Hurry up, here we go. Now Simeon. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Riley Dixon now. And remember, he had his first punt blocked. Pulled in at the 24. Another nice move. Shedding the tackle and it gives him some room. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A legal block in the back. Return team. Penalty stings big oh, time there. Down. Wipes away a very good return. And they work out it so hard because the goal is to give yourself some space for your offense to really work. Try and gain an additional first down outside the 20 or 25 yard line. Instead, this one's going to come back. Smith. The tight end Kelsey has it over the middle. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. yards left for the offense. It's second down. Operating from the gun. Smith. And this will be incomplete. Kareem Hunt is running back the intended receiver. And it's third and five. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. Uh, he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Now Smith. And going deep for Hill. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Will Parks. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
so we will see yet another drive in this overtime. For whatever reason, neither team able to finish this game off. I know that the first thought is, does anyone really want to win it? But I think that they both desperately want to win it, and sometimes you force things, and that leads to errors. Well, it's out there for the taking. We'll see who can do it. Here's Simeon. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this one is incomplete. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Let's go! Green, 39! From the gun, here's Simeon. Oh, and it's intercepted! Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a KC touchdown. Still catching our breaths from that electric finish. You get an overtime, that's one thing. It was a great four quarters. But then an OT, not only to win it, but to win it on a defensive score. Wow. Oh, it definitely. And I think from now on, we're going to definitely travel with someone who can help us because I thought I was going to pass out at the end. <laughs> not just getting to the overtime, but the plays in overtime that led to this one and to finish it on a defensive touchdown. 